and welcome to Different Leaf, a show for new and experienced cannabis consumers. I'm Britt Smith. Before there was prohibition, the most popular form of cannabis consumption was through tincture. You know, the old-timey brown bottles of infused oil that people would buy in the 1800s from their corner drugstore that had a little pipette to put a few drops under your tongue. Before cannabis was made illegal in 1937, pharmacies across the U.S. carried bottles of cannabis tincture on their shelves. It was the go-to medicine for Americans for treating pain, nausea, insomnia, and many other common ailments. But even without it in the pharmacies, making it into tincture remained one of the most effective ways to use marijuana medicinally. That's because tinctures provide consistent doses, offer consistent potency and consistent effects. Nowadays, as you may have realized from all those options at your local gas station or grocery store, not all tincture is good. Some of it tastes kind of crappy, others have no real effect, and some are made by isolating THC or CBD and leaving out all the extra good stuff that the plant provides. So if we want to use tincture like they did back in the day as an everyday medicine, what should we know about what makes a quality medical cannabis tincture? This episode, we're going to talk to the founder of the most popular tincture company in Massachusetts, Peter Glantz of Howell's Tincture. Peter started Howell's Tincture about a decade ago when he was a patient himself. And since then, he's been following in the footsteps of more than 5,000 years of humans who prepare medical tinctures by taking the whole plant medicine approach. We're going to discuss the history of making plant tinctures, how that history inspired the concoctions that Peter ended up making, what ailments people say are best treated by his tinctures, and the difference between extraction and infusion and why it should matter to patients. We'll be right back with Peter Glantz of Howell's Tincture. What is your background before you were in house and how did you get to the point where you were like, I've made a tincture that I need to share with other people? That's a great question. You know, one thing that I've learned over doing this and working with this plant medicine and cannabis is it's not just what goes in your body that makes it effective. It's really the culture and the stories around it that increases mm. its efficacy. And so I just, you know, I'm thankful to be here and I just want to thank you and the Different Leaf team for doing that work so much, sharing information and stories. I really think it, it really uplifts and benefits people when they're using this plant. Thank you so much. So for me, when I, I started before I was doing this, I was a touring concert director. Oh, wow. Yeah. And a music festival producer. Uh, I worked with, uh, yeah, put on shows. And that's really, it, it was in the mix of that when my need to start using cannabis began because I was in the entertainment industry there's plenty of weed around you know so right. it wasn't I was that, say. Was, <laughs> that was happening uh, all the time but I, I guess how it began for me you know it's intertwined with that work because I had you know that's a very visual job I have to be very you know my eyes need to be clear and focused and my right. um, mind needs to be clear and focused and I actually have a degenerative eye condition and so in 2012 I had a surgery to um, try to uh, prevent the progression yeah. And the result was unfortunately went sideways. And I ended up with pain in my eyes that would come just sort of suddenly emerge in the middle of a conversation, walking on the street and doing that work. And, you know, as a touring concert director, that required me to be really present with people, you know, not just the band, but the tech crew, mm -hmm. sometimes the fans, managers, PR people, any uh, insurance companies. I mean, all these things all often a very concentrated short period of time. Yeah. So being very present, focused and able to do that work was compromised by by sudden pain in my eyes. And that Gosh. resulted in a lot of anxiety about if I could continue working and taking care of my family. That was at the moment when I was you know, speaking with a friend of mine about it and he suggested cannabis as a way to relieve the symptoms. Was this friend of yours a musician by any chance? 
he works in he makes a lot of music videos so he was a uh-huh. um, a cinematographer and a director uh-huh. you know he suggested cannabis and i i just sort of thought it was a good idea but i didn't think it would work i mean i you know like i said i was in the entertainment industry i'd smoked weed mm-hmm. i'd been going I, and and i'd actually stopped because a few years earlier i'd gone to a party and every year I'd go and I'd go to California to work a lot. And every year I'd go and there'd be, a, I'd take a hit. And it's just like, the, it was exponentially more potent every year to yeah. the point when like I took a hit at a party one time and it was like, I just felt uncomfortable. Yeah. So I didn't really just feel like it was right for me anymore. And I'd stopped. So when he suggested that, I thought, oh, well, maybe this will be fun, but how can I do this work? How can I, you know, really solve the, the bigger problem I have? And he said, well, what about tincture? Oh. That, you know, it was really that moment that it clicked for me because it, it just, oh, oh yeah, like this is just a plant. And yeah. I've been making tinctures and infused oils from other plants for 15 years. And so when I changed that perspective and rem- realized, oh yeah, it's just a plant, I made a tincture. And in doing that, it really helped me and, mm-hmm. it, and it really worked. And I was able to get back to work, being present and really relieve those symptoms and help me manage them. How do you think that it being a tincture was different from just smoking it for you? There's a couple of things. One really is that about control. So I was able to just take a measured amount and find the right amount for myself. And it was mm. be able to be consistent each time. So I could relieve and reduce the symptoms in a consistent way and mm. without being concerned about over-consuming. And it's really about the control, just to say it again. The, the thing, the difference was that I could control it and it was take the right amount to relieve the symptoms without it being beyond what I could be comfortable with. And that made a huge difference. That's so great. So what year was it that you first started making your own tincture while you were still in that industry? It was 2012. I started making for myself. And and since it helped me, I I joined a co-op in Rhode Island. That's where I live. To be able to get the plant material and continue making it for myself. I was a patient and I could be part of a co-op. So when I went there and I started making it, some of the other patients requested if they could have some of my extra because they heard I was doing it. And so that's when I first shared it with other people. It was four other patients and I bottled it. I got it tested and I made a, a label and I gave it to them and I, you know, went on. I thought, oh, well, this is great. You know, of course I'll do this. But I wasn't thinking about it very much after giving it to them until I started getting some messages like, hey, hey, what's going on? You know, when can I get some more? In fact, I went into the co-op and one of the patients was there and she had a walker and she looked at me and she pushed the walker out of the way and she did this dance around the room and oh was gosh. laughing and was like, I, I cleaned my house yesterday for the first time in two years. Wow. And I, I've been, you know, I normally sit on the couch all day. And so I, you know, I rely on this. And I, and she was just, she's like, the only thing is that I only have a tiny bit left. Like, when am I going to get more? <laughs> yeah. That and, and hearing other stories like that was the moment when I really, it became a mission. It was like, this is something that I need to continue to do and to do it so people, it's continuously available for people. Yeah, yeah. So when you know that there's someone whose life is like benefits so much and, you know, it seems small, maybe, oh, I clean my house, but you know, that is the cleaning of your house can be so healthy, can be so yeah, beneficial. And absolutely. that that autonomy and that sense of, you know, you can take care of your own space and just that. And then to be able to smile and dance afterward, that really was the moment when the mission began to focus on making this valuable plant medicine available to everyone who could benefit from it. Wow, you were really following your passion here to help people help themselves live a better life. It's really, in some ways, it's because of the medicine and the blessing of, of hearing those things was a gift to me. You know, I mm-hmm. the passion of it was actually still, it was like, I, you know, I have a kid and we read books. So it filled my bucket, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> and, yeah. and, that, and wanting to keep that filled was part of it, you know, as, but really it was that knowing to be able to have this opportunity to help people was sort of hard to stop for sure. Even now, I don't think of it so much, but I realize that, yes, it's a, it's a passion. I, I really have felt compelled from the moment yeah. I really started to see how it has helping people. I mean, it's obvious to me that you feel very passionately about this. And those sorts of stories fuel you. Let me ask you about a little more about how you were making this medicine at the time. It was 2012, so there wasn't like testing labs available. How did you know 
what strain you were using, what sort of terpenes were in it, how to do the ratios two to one with CBD. Did you have those options or was it just like, this is weed and it's going in this mm-hmm. oil? It was when I started making for other people that I dove deeper into that. And actually in 2012, there was a testing lab in Massachusetts. Oh. So I did drop off samples, get it tested and make sure because I I didn't want to give this to people without feeling that they could trust it and that I could trust it. But all I got was cannabinoid information. What was the strain that you were able to use? Or do you know the name of it? That's the thing. When I started, it was just the guy who was growing it in the co-op would just give me a bag of weed and I would use that. And that worked really well. I mean, I think the thing though that did develop over time is that some people started to say, hey, sometimes I use this, it keeps me up and I'm awake and I have all this energy. Sometimes I use it and it's really sedative and relaxing. And Mm -hmm. you know, generally they found it helped them with their main you know, their main symptoms regardless, but those things were impacting their experience with it. And that's Mm -hmm. when I started to ask more about the plant and the source of it. And I learned more about strains and the different ways they could affect people. So that was the beginning of how we started to have different formulas. Yeah. So like, because patients were asking about that, I was able to start to source it and ask for the canvas to be given to me by strain. And so we started to have a nighttime tincture that was uh, indica strain that was very relaxing. So I made a tincture with that. And then one that was with, you know, the effects that are associated with sativas, a strain that was uplifting. And I made Mm -hmm. that and people who wanted to have that uplifting experience, I was able to share that with them. And that really became when I started to learn more about the plan. It was always for me, you know, patients are the experts in a lot of Mm -hmm. ways there because nobody cares more than patients about what's in it, how it's made, why you're doing what, because this is really, uh, you know, so critical to their lives. It's their medicine. And for a lot of them, it's their medicine after a long journey of other experiences where they haven't been able to find relief until they got it. And so they really, really care. And so that's how all like how it developed was always listening to patients and then responding and trying to serve them, you know, starting with that woman in the story I told you that continued, you know, not just in the co-op, but it became, you know, after two years, I couldn't be compliant because more people had heard about it and they'd been asking me for it. Unfortunately, a dispensary in Rhode Island had opened and they had heard about it. Mm. And so they asked me if they could carry it. And, you know, at that time a, in Rhode Island, there was one line in the law about where dispensaries could get cannabis. And it was from patients and co-ops. Basically. Wow. Back in the day. So I was able to continue to produce it and share it with them and have them share with patients at the dispensary. So if that was for three years, I was able to do that in Rhode Island. The pattern kind of continued. I gave them, you know, 40 bottles. I, again, didn't think about where it would go too much. I was just Mm -hmm. like, again, here's an opportunity to share with people and see what happens. I didn't hear anything for about three months. And then I started getting messages like, hey, we need more. And then a couple of people somehow got my email and were asking me for it. So I started to, so they ordered more. I made more, but this time those bottles, instead of three months, it was one month. And so I started making wow. more. And in that time, I kept getting messages, people asking for different things. That's when we started to do CBD ratios because so many patients were requesting CBD formulas. And that really continued while I also was doing the other work, I was still putting on concerts and, and doing these things simultaneously. You're a busy guy. <laughs> well, it's uh, a, a, a fortunate. I was fortunate to have these things to keep me busy. It was about 2017 and I really started to have to decide to choose one path or the other. Yeah. I had a kid. I couldn't do either one to their full potential if I right. didn't focus. And music is great and putting on shows is amazing and people really are impacted. I mean, that's like... It's a meaningful thing for so many people and those moments are memorable in their lives. But when I was thinking about it and just the difference is remarkable when someone is really day to day relying on something you're making and putting in their body to thrive. And I, at that point, you know, there were hundreds or thousands of people who were, who were using it and I didn't feel like I could stop that for yeah. them. So I started to focus entirely on making the tincture and sharing it with more people. And eventually in 2018, I was able to partner with a group in Massachusetts and bring it to Massachusetts uh, first for medical and then adult use in 2019. 
And now House is, we've sold, you know, over 300,000 bottles and tens of thousands of people rely on this. And I don't say that to, I guess, to brag. I say that as a way to communicate that we've always made decisions from that core of like being patients. Like now there's a team who works at House. We're all patients and we make decisions based upon what's going to be the safest, most effective choice. So I say it in that. I sort of talk about how many people use it to share that that's turned out to be good business. Yeah, <laughs> it's turned out yeah. to be a successful way to develop things. And it's something I really want to emphasize that listening to patients and listening to people use it as they, you know, they really are the experts in making something that works. Yeah, that's the most valuable feedback that you're going to get. So you mentioned at first that you were giving it to friends at the co-op and people that needed it in Rhode Island. And every one of them was, you know, telling you that the demand was more and more and more. We need more. Do you remember what those folks were treating? And is it the same sorts of ailments that people are using it to treat now? The initial early group of patients generally had more severe specific conditions. People with fibromyalgia, people with cancer who were either using to manage the impact of chemo or the other symptoms involved. There was a lot of people who had, you know, had been in car accidents resulting in severe pain that they it was ongoing. Over time, I think the majority of people, they actually did this study that I think Marion McNabb, who you had on, I think did a yeah. survey of medical patients who said that, you know, 67% use it for either insomnia, anxiety, or chronic pain. Yeah, And so even for so many people, all those conditions I'm talking about, often the symptoms include one of those three things. Right. So, right. and that's for people who have severe conditions and then also for people who just are alive today in this world, responding to all of the things that might cause anxiety or insomnia or chronic pain. And that's pretty widespread. One of the really wonderful like opportunities that came from being available for adult use is that people who have anxiety, insomnia, chronic pain, they can explore using this in just by going to a dispensary and getting some and seeing if it mm-hmm. helps. And so I'm really thankful that it's become more and more accessible through the adult use side as, and of course we continue to serve medicals as well. So let's talk about how you actually make this tincture and why it's so dang good. It's the most popular tincture in Massachusetts for a very good reason. I tried it, I guess, when it started coming out on the medical side in 2018. I had heard through the grapevine similarly that it was, (laughs) you know, from other patients that it was really helping them for insomnia. And I have been a lifelong insomniac ever since I was a little kid. My brain just sort of comes alive at night. And that's great, you know, when you're a creative person, but when you have to get up in the morning and take care of stuff, you need a good night's sleep. So I tried some of the 10 to 1 tincture, which is 10 being CBD to 1 THC. I didn't want to get any kind of psychoactive effects. I just wanted to relax. And I'd never slept better than that first night. I woke up so rested, so refreshed from it. And I was like, this is really, really well-made stuff. So what is it that you do with this bud? Where do you get the cannabis from now? What kind of oil do you use? And what's the process of actually making the different tinctures? Well, thank you. Thank you for telling that story. Stories like that are the reason that you know, I keep going and the reason for being and doing this and how it's made. So, uh, you know, for Hal's, all all it is, this tincture, actually stepping back in for the what is tincture? A good thing to know is that tincture was the most common form of cannabis consumption before prohibition. So, you know, around the globe. So, and all it is, is, you know, the definition of tincture is really just around a small amount of a plant that has been infused into a liquid. And so Howl's is simply cannabis infused organic avocado oil. Oh, wow. That's it. That's all it is. And, you know, people like it because it's simple. And I've talked to so many people, tens of, not tens, but thousands, probably people. And these are the main reasons people like it is that it's simple. You can drop it in your mouth and swallow. That's it. It's consistent. So it has a measured dropper uh, and it's always the same potency. We, we've been testing it you know, since the beginning and formulating it to the same potency. So if you find, say, one milliliter works for you, you can rely on it today, next week, next year and get the similar or same results. And then the, uh, and we also use the same strain 
each time. And that mm -hmm. also maintains the same uh, effects. And then finally, it's pure. So it's got organic avocado oil, organic sunflower lecithin, medical grade cannabis, the only ingredients. But the highlight of its purity, and I think really why, you know, when you hear that from other people that, oh, this is what works, is really how it's made. And all we do is we do the same thing people have been doing for 5,000 years. It's called whole plant infusion. Mm -hmm. All it is, is we actually take the actual cannabis flower and we put it into the organic avocado oil with low heat and stirring for a long time. Mm -hmm. And the result is the full beneficial properties of the plant just soak directly into that oil, the cannabinoids, the terpenes, the flavonoids, and it reflects that source strain. So you said that humans have been making tinctures for at least 5,000 years taking the plant and putting it into some sort of oil and heating it and then using that oil as a medicine. Where is that method from? Do you know what parts of the world it's from? So this method, it was popularized by the father of Chinese medicine 5,000 years ago. There's a document that shows someone writes about him doing it and the recipe of it. And I'm sure that he was the famous one when writing started. So it got attributed <laughs> to him, but I'm pretty sure it was happening long before him. Right. And so, you know, for us, that's 5,000 years of human trials for safety and efficacy. Uh, it started in China and then when, and then there's documented use of it in India, in the Middle East, in North Africa, in Europe, in South America, in North America, all before the Commonwealth of Massachusetts was <laughs> founded. And so that for us is that history of human trials for safety and efficacy. And this is something I learned, like I told you when I started, I just made it this way because this is how I had been making other tinctures and infused oils. This is the way it's done. But over about five or six years of doing it, and as there was an industry growing, people started to say, tell me, oh, well, you should do these other methods that are going to be where well, you can extract out just THC or just CBD. Like I was like, well, I don't want to just change what I'm doing when some people already rely on it. And I looked into it, did do this study in Israel that was five universities comparing a whole plant preparation to uh, an isolate or distillate preparation. Mm. And the result was not only did they, there was significantly higher efficacy, about 30% for the symptom relief. The big takeaway was that the tolerance level just did not increase rapidly when you have the whole plant preparation that it, you don't wow. have that increase in tolerance over time so substantially and that's when i you know i got another tincture that was made those ways and i tested it and i tested hal's tincture and theirs just had this one line it was just like thc just that's it and then the house one had like every single one of these cannabinoids was listed on the report and so that's when i was like hey there's something different going on here and so that's really the sort of the highlight of Hal's purity and this tincture is that because we make it from the actual flower, all those cannabinoids just soak in there. When you use these other methods of extraction, often what happens is either people are pulling out just the popular one like THC or CBD, yeah. or they're pulling out now because more are becoming popular and known, they're pulling out different ones and mixing them back into something and saying, now we, you know, this is full spectrum. This is uh, what it is, but by the nature of extracting out with different types of solvents, propane or butane or ethanol, mainly the difference between extraction and infusion by extracting it out, you're pulling out specific cannabinoids and by the nature you're destroying the rest. Right. So, but when you do the infusion, it, everything is just bonding directly in during the process. And so you can see that both on the, the results that they do detect for on the lab. And one thing to know is that in the state of Massachusetts, the labs you know, test for 17 cannabinoids, but there are 113 or more in the plant. So with HALS, you know, you're not just getting those ones that are tested for, but all those ones that are unknown. So whole plant infusion also lets all those terpenes enter the oil. Terpenes are molecules created by the cannabis plant that have names like limonene, linalool, uh, maybe you've heard of myrcene. These are all terpenes, uh, molecules that have different effects in the human body, like anti-inflammatory or antifungal. So Howells does testing to see what kinds of terpenes you'll get in each batch. 
what is the difference that you'll get from seeing all these different terpenes, you know, understanding all of the different little notes in your symphony, I guess, versus the isolated cannabinoids or terpenes that we might see in other products where they just have like an isolated THC? This is a big thing is that when we started testing for terpenes, it was like where it was like, you know, we get a whole bunch back. And again, it's a similar thing. They only test for some of them. But we, you know, end up with 10 or 12 terpenes in there. And this is sort of in contrast, both the cannabinoids and the terpenes with other tinctures and most edibles where they're pulling out cannabinoids, mixing it into something else. They're pulling out terpenes and then formulating it according to sort of a human idea of what's going to be the best. And this mm. that's more of a pharmaceutical approach. That's the isolation yeah. approach, right? Yeah. And so that can be helpful. And, you know, it's, that's great if that works for people. But what uh, we try to make space for, and why, well, part of the mission and the passion for this is to maintain inside of this you know, new industry space for the plant medicine approach, which yeah. is the history of using it, of which we are, our work is to capture the, you know, what the plant has to teach. We're kind of a the message is the, you know, that we often say is the plant is the teacher. So by pulling out the uh, essence of the plant and the cannabinoids and terpenes and flavonoids and even chlorophyll is in there, you know, which you can go to Whole Foods and you can go get capsules of chlorophyll and pay for it, or it can just be right in here. So the result is kind of the difference for a lot of people. What we hear is that like, when you have just THC in something, it's like a tuba. It's like, boom, boom. It's clear. It's yeah. distinct. But then when you have this complete spectrum of all the cannabinoids and terpenes and all the rest of it, it's more like a symphony where there's like yes. the, there's the swell of the violin, the beat of the drum, the twinkle of the triangle, the tuba gets mixed in there. And that is something that sort of I want to make sure is available to people, especially as so many people are being introduced to, introduced to cannabis through the new market or learning a lot more because now it's more open, is mm -hmm. that to make sure that this kind of approach and has products that are available and that people who are called to this way are, have something to choose. I love that metaphor of the symphony. That's exactly what I think about when we're thinking about whole plant infusion versus isolates or distillates, which is what you were describing where there's just selected in and out molecules from the plant. I do want to spend a moment to sort of advocate for understanding the value of the, the sort of THC side of the medicine, yeah. because I've seen that so much. And it's something that I think has been because of this, probably just because of the, the CBD industry being, being so marketed a lot. And there's been a big definition of CBD is the medicine, THC is for partying. And, yeah. but as someone who's been serving patients for so long, I mean, and just purely looking at the numbers sold, like the THC is hugely valuable to people on the medical side for many, that euphoric effect, that perception shifting experience. That, that is can be part very of, useful. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, and that's a huge part of people who use it for the medicine. So, so whether or not you're using it for medicine or you're just, you know, you wanna have fun and you're out there, you know, to, by changing your perception of the world around you and it helps you laugh at things funnier, it helps you connect with your friends. All of those things I consider good medicine, whether you're thinking about it in that yeah. way or not. And that's so much of what I kind of want to just really express so that so that when people hear about cannabis, they don't just feel like the CBD is the way to have medicine, but the, to really understand that this other part has that has been most stigmatized and the most sort of categorized and marketed as party molecule mm -hmm. <laughs> is actually can be really beneficial. And by using a tincture, you can find that right amount so that it can impact you in the way that you want. That's a really, really good point. The THC is heavily demonized. And when people see there's a small amount of THC in something, they get very, very concerned that it might make you high. And I spoke to the very well-known cannabis doctor, Dr. Peter Grinspoon, who will also be out this season. And Dr. Grinspoon explained THC in a way to me that really helped. He said that THC is a medicine in itself for many different things. There's no better sleep aid. There's no better pain reliever. But the side effect of it is a little bit of a high, a little bit of a head high. Every medicine has a side effect. It's about whether that side effect is tolerable or not for you versus the benefit that it is giving you. So there are many things that THC is good for in any method of ingestion, but when it comes to tincture, it's really, really easy to fine tune that dosing. And that's really what 
I love about Howl's. You have these different options of figure out which version of THC to CBD ratio works best for you and know that it's going to be reliable and it's always going to be that same way. You mentioned a future concoction that you've got coming out. Where can we get Howells? It's just in Massachusetts right now. Are you, are you guys out in the rest of New England? And what else do you have up your sleeve for the future? Howells is most easily accessible in Massachusetts right now. We're in dispensaries across the state. And one of the, and you can go to howells.com and look up where we have some dispensaries that we've been working with a long time. And one of our approaches we have is to have continuous availability. So we have a, we have a core group where it's always available. You can always get it. And that's to really serve people who rely on it. And then we had been in Rhode Island and actually COVID, we had to stop production during COVID and we're restarting now. So we'll be back mm -hmm. in Rhode Island later this year, which is meaningful to me because that's where we started. And there's still a lot of people, fortunately, have been able to frequently go into mass and, and, and access it during this time, but it'll be nice to be back there. So as yeah. of now, those, those are the two definite places. Because our mission is to make it available to everyone who can benefit from it, we are exploring other places where we can go and do that. So the nice. newer tinctures, I mean, we have a core line and it's those ratios that you mentioned, the high CBD 10 to one and a one to one. And the other ones are uh, a nighttime, anytime and daytime, which are, you know, come in single and double strength. And so those ones are also continuously available and part of our core line. And those have all were sort of developed over the years with patients and responding to their requests. And each of those nighttime, anytime, daytime, for those of you who do pay attention to strains, you know, those are strain specific and, Right now, our nighttime is LA Kush Cake. Our anytime is Temple Kush. Our daytime is Lemon Jeffrey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and love and that one. you are great. I love it too. And for years, people have been requesting who have this high tolerance something to serve them. So we made these new tinctures. We just started offering them in December magic for people who are experienced and with high tolerance where it's a small bottle, just a third ounce with it, you know, and it's made with live keef. It just Strong. take the plants. Yeah. And it, and it ends up being very potent. It's a it complete spectrum, all the cannabinoids and terpenes, but in a small bottle. So this is a new one that's really for only for experienced people who know what they need. And it, and so we, we've been doing that one. I'm really, I'm not one of those people. <laughs> so I, you know, but having now offered it and really, you know, hearing so much feedback, there's so many people who do get to this place where they have a high tolerance and they need something to serve them. But if you're listening to this and think that this might be something that would be right for you, then you know, I recommend you give it a try. Give it a try. Yeah, I do as well. I think that it's a fantastic product. I love the mission behind the company as well. And I'm excited to try magic. I mean, if somebody names something magic, <laughs> you know, you got to give it a shot. Keef infused tincture. That's going to be exciting. Peter, thank you so, so much for taking the time to chat with us today. I'll keep an eye out at your local dispensary for Howls with the wolf on the label. A big thanks to this week's guest, Peter Glantz of Howell's Tincture. Next week, we're going to get a sneak peek of Dr. Peter Grinspoon's latest book, Seeing Through the Smoke. And we'll get a massive list of medical cannabis questions answered by our good friend, Dr. Peter Grinspoon. Cannabis does not increase the risk of schizophrenia. That is absolute nonsense. The rates of schizophrenia have been flat out stable at about 1% for the last 50 years. And the worldwide cannabis use has gone from like 10,000 people to like 400 million people. And the rates of schizophrenia have been flat. Like they're trying so hard to prove that they've budged up, but they haven't. What cannabis can do is it can precipitate a psychotic illness like schizophrenia early. If you don't already have your winter 2023 issue of Different Leaf the magazine, get yours now at differentleaf.com and flip to page 45 for an exclusive in-depth look at Dr. Grinspoon's new book. Be sure to like and subscribe to the podcast wherever you're listening right now and follow us on social media at Different Leaf and I'm on social media at Brit the British. Make sure you check out differentleaf.com for all the issues of our gorgeous magazine, including our beautiful winter issue, which is all about medical marijuana. That's available at differentleaf.com and on thousands of shelves across the US and Canada at select Barnes & Noble bookstores, Walmarts, CVS pharmacies and at select cannabis dispensaries. That's differentleaf.com.